um, just thinking about technology, and I was I was pondering the 2002 movie Minority Report, which starred Tom Cruise. It, it depicted a future world in, in 2054 that was so scientifically advanced it was possible to predict crimes before they happened. I'm sure you remember it. Uh, they got all these global experts together to predict what technology would be like in the future. And this is things like predictive analytics, touchscreens, wearable technology, augmented reality, or autonomous vehicles. Ten years later, obviously, all these things were already in use, not only in society, but in, in transport and logistics. Is there is there technology out there that you've identified that you think could speed some of these trends up that would then therefore perhaps slow trade growth down, if you see where I'm going with this? Certainly, a lot of the technology that's going to affect the growth of trade is the technology that makes individual devices work. We've already seen a lot of that, but I think that there's more coming. And so we see that in the pretty robust trade in, in electronic devices, semiconductors and, and things like that, which are in many cases taking the place of things that were put in product. And we're not just talking here about vacuum tubes and, and things like that, but you now have uh, a huge number of toys and games and, and electrical devices and household equipment and so forth that use semiconductors to do jobs that used to be done by parts, physical parts that needed to be moved. And so that trade is not so strong anymore. How this is going to affect the flow of trade in the future, uh, I can't really guess, but I think that we're very accustomed to living in a different sort of way now. Um, I'm sitting here uh, talking to you uh, on a computer. Well, I often use that computer for other purposes. It can function as a telephone. It can function as a camera. It can function as a television set. And so that's a lot of stuff that I don't need to have anymore. And that's really affecting the, the demand for goods. All good points. If this is where the world's going, Mark, how should 3PLs, brokers, shipping lines, freighter operators, you name it, um, everyone who relies on the international business of trade, how should they prepare for this? Do we, do we need less wide body freighters if trade growth is perhaps going to be more regional in the future? Do we really need these 20,000 TEU container ships for long haul trades, or at least in the numbers that we, we seem like we're going to have them? I'm not a huge fan of these Mega Max ships. I think that uh, they don't provide a lot of benefits to many of the companies that have put them to use. And I think they have a lot of disadvantages. My hunch is that the reason that a number of ship lines have purchased these uh, 25,000 TEU ships or something close to that is that governments in various countries have an interest in having them manufactured because they use a lot of steel. They're going to keep a lot of industrial workers employed in making the stuff for these ships. But I don't think that these enormous vessels are really so practical, aside from the fact that they don't really seem to have the economies of scale that were promised We've seen that, that they really uh, lack flexibility uh, in the face of a changing world economy, and they're definitely fouling up trade. It used to be that about 10% of container ships were running behind schedule. Now I've heard estimates of 30 and 40% of container ship voyages are behind schedule, and that's in part due to the complexity of discharging and, and reloading of these enormous vessels. And I think we need to take a look at the changes in trade patterns. The, the uh, average distance of international trade is becoming shorter. I think the reasons for this are, are obvious. Uh, some trade is uh, regionalizing. In other cases, you've got uh, a lot of trade growth in new countries where the distance to trading partners is relatively short. So you might want a 25,000 TEU ship to carry freight between Shanghai and, and Rotterdam, but is it really the most efficient way to carry freight between Shanghai and uh, Mumbai uh, or uh, Singapore or Indonesia or, or places where you're now seeing substantial industrial growth? In those cases, I think the time required to 
uh, deal with these giant ships in or uh, will outweigh any advantages that may come from the size of the vessel. So I, I think that the, the Megamax ships are probably the wrong vessel for that purpose.